Transfiguration of Jesus Food for Soul and Goa Co-working present today's readings and reflection. August 6, 2022 Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took His throne. His clothing was bright as snow, and the hair on His head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire, with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where He sat. A surge, a surging stream of fire flowed out from where He sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to Him, and myriads upon myriads attended Him. The court was convened and the books were opened. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the Ancient One and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The Word of the Lord. Let the many islands be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord. Before the Lord of all the earth, the heavens proclaim his justice, all people see his glory. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. Because you, O Lord, are the Most High over all the earth, exalted far above all gods. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory, This is my Son, my Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You will do well to be attentive to it, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased, listen to him, Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up a mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. 
Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but became fully awake. They saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection on Today's Readings by Bob Today we celebrate the transfiguration of Jesus. The first reading describes the Son of Man coming in glory and light to the throne of the Ancient One, the Lord God. The psalm speaks of the Lord as the ruler who comes in glory and power. In the second reading from the second letter of St. Peter, the author recalls the transfiguration of the Lord Jesus on God's holy mountain. It was an event that touched his life. The Gospel is Luke's account of the Transfiguration, in the book of Daniel. The Son of Man was seen as a prefigure of the Messiah. In this passage, the Son of Man comes gloriously into the presence of the Ancient One, God. The Son of Man is given glory and honor and power by the Ancient One. The Son of Man is to issue in a new time of dedication and glory for those who follow the Lord. The psalm today is a hymn of praise to the Lord God for being the majestic ruler of all, the leader of a time of glory for all God's people. All of creation, earthly and heavenly, come in homage before the Lord. The second reading is a passage from the second letter of Peter, in which the author speaks of the glory which was revealed to Jesus' three specially chosen disciples, Peter, James, John. This experience of majesty enabled the disciples to proclaim the good news of Jesus and to look forward to his glorious second coming. In the Gospel, Luke relates the account of the Transfiguration. It takes place on a mountain similar to the revelation of God to Moses on Mount Sinai. Moses and Elijah symbolized the fulfillment of the Law and the Prophets from of old. They are a sign of the continuation of what has been to the time of Jesus and the future glory at the end of time. The whole event enables the three disciples to be able to start to put things in perspective, but it is only after the death and resurrection of Jesus that they really begin to understand. When I studied in the Holy Land, my favorite time and place of all was the two days I spent on Emmy Tabor a mountain in the north of Holy Land. This mountain is traditionally accepted as the mountain of the Transfiguration. From my busy schedule as a student, this was the longest break. It was a time of retreat and reflection. After riding up the twisty, switchback road to the top of this mount, I was able to pray and be at peace. It was one of the only really quiet places in all of Israel. There was no traffic, no panhandlers, nor beggars, no speakers blaring out their songs or prayers. The church on the top is beautifully constructed to take advantage of the sun rising each morning. It is truly a place of glory. I was able to reflect on the Transfiguration while on empty Tabor and many times since. It is interesting that three synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all place the Transfiguration between Peter's profession of faith and one of Jesus' predications of his death. It seems that after Peter professed his belief in Jesus, 
Jesus reveals the fullness of what it means for him to be the Messiah, the Christ. Jesus has come to reveal the glory of his Abba Father through his suffering, death, and resurrection. To me what is striking are the parallels between the account of the transfiguration and some people's near-death experiences. It is almost as if Jesus is experiencing what will take place after his death and resurrection. He has an out-of-body experience. The presence of bright light leads to meeting with two of those who had preceded him in the eternal life journey process. The presence of Moses and Elijah are a confirmation for Jesus and his disciples that he is proceeding along the faith paths of the previous individuals and leaders of faith. After Jesus' transfiguration, he, like most people who have had a near-death experience, is even more aware of his mission in life. He is even more dedicated to do what his Abba Father, who happens to be God, wants him to do, to help people journey back to the house of the Abba. Jesus realizes that his ministry will include suffering and death. He may not be crazy about dying, but Jesus has no fear of what lies beyond because he has experienced, in his human nature, the transfiguration which will await him after his own death and resurrection. The transfiguration is also a reminder to me that if I strive to fulfill the mission which I have received from God, that I will share in the glory of Jesus' transfiguration. By being more dedicated to my calling to serve those around me, I can share in the majesty of Son of Man in the presence of the Ancient One. The Feast of the Transfiguration should be a time of renewal and rededication for all of us. We are given a foretaste of the magnificence that awaits us as we journey back to the home of our Abba. Who happens to be God, the personal question or action for today? When I think about the Transfiguration, what thoughts, feelings, or questions come to me? What do I see as the meaning of the transfiguration for Jesus, for the three apostles, and for me? How can I spend more time in the presence of the glorified Lord Jesus so that I can be renewed to continue the mission which God has given me? What difference can the transfiguration be for me as I meet people today, this coming week? Let us pray, blessed are you. Lord God ever empowering and always revealing your glory. Through your goodness, you shared with your Son and his disciples a glimpse of what awaits them at the end of the earthly journey of faith. You show your approval and blessings upon your Son as he continues to fulfill your plan for the salvation of the world. As we celebrate the transfiguration of your Son, may we be as enthusiastic as Saint Peter. May we rededicate ourselves to the particular ministry you have for us. May we be source of strength and joy to others as they travel along their paths, heading to your heavenly abode. We give you, the Ancient One, all the glory and praise and honor that is due you and your Son, together with the Holy Spirit, for you are the ruler of glory, the majesty of light, the Most High over all. You, together with your Son and the Holy Spirit, are our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen. Presented by Father Frankie Fernandez OFM Capuchin Justice Peace Integrity Creation JPIC Capuchin Goa